Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to put dark mode into your MP lab as well as how to go about tweaking the look of your code as you like. I'll also talk about some of the basic customizations and shortcuts, so let's get started. I have a project open here that includes a bunch of different syntaxes, so you can see the look of the code as I go along. Even though there's an example given to you as you modify the look, you will see in a little bit that there are some things you can only see if you have some code open in the IDE. One thing to mention is that if you do all sorts of coding, you may have realized that this IDE looks a lot like some of the other IDEs out there. That's because MPLab is based on an open source IDE called NetBeans. This is not just a big plugin from Microchip to NetBeans, since it changes a lot of stuff and adds a lot of its own. It's more like a modified version of it. There is no dark mode built into the MPLab, but there is a dark mode plugin developed for NetBeans that you can download since MPLab is also based on NetBeans. Go to Tools tab above and select Plugins at the bottom. Go to Available Plugins tab, scroll down, and on the list find Darkula LAF for NetBeans. LAF stands for Look and Feel by the way, and Darkula is a theme that exists in NetBeans. This plugin modifies Darkula to be dark mode that you are more traditionally used to. Select the plugin and press Install. Click Next. Accept the agreement and click Install. Because this plugin directly modifies the IDE, you need to restart. Click Finish. Your IDE now should be dark mode. Now after this point on, it's all personal taste, so you don't need to do any of the things I'm about to do. This tab here is called the toolbar. All the buttons inside of it have their uses, but right now it's bloated with a couple unnecessary things for my taste. For record, any of the buttons here can also be found on the drop down menus up above, like for example, build button here. If you go to production tab, you can see it's also here. So the toolbar is for convenience, so don't worry about removing or adding things too much. Personally, I'll right click the toolbar and deselect the ones I don't use. How do I? Status flags, programming center, MPLab store, MPLab discover, data visualizer. The rest I find myself using, so I'll keep them. But there's one thing I absolutely recommend doing, which is to select the debugging option. You may not know how to debug yet, but let me tell you that you will be doing that a lot. You can also use the vertical dots on the left of the toolbars to move them around, and even put them to another tab below the others. You can also go to View menu, go to Toolbars option, and select Customize Toolbars. Here you can add many more items as you like by simply dragging them onto a toolbar. I can't explain what each of these do, but for a beginner you will be fine with the current toolbar you have. And if you get better at using the IDE, you will know what to add from this menu, I'm sure. Also, while this page is open, you can drag items from the toolbar to the menu to remove them as well. In fact, I'll remove Mizra check button here since I don't use it, and move debug project button here to the debug bar on the right. You can also make new toolbars by pressing this button, which will put another toolbar to the right that you can add and remove items from and move around independently. Let's talk about how to modify how your code looks. I'm sure most people will like tweaking these, but it may look overwhelming at them first. Let me walk you through the easy steps to modify the colors. Go to Tools menu above and press the options at the bottom. This is the place where most of the settings reside. Go to Fonts and Colors. As you can see, Darkula is already selected as the plugin we downloaded modifies Darkula theme. For things related to syntax, such as text, can be modified here, while highlight related things like searching for a word or holding and dragging can be modified in the Highlights tab. I can't show you every option, but I'll show you my personal preferences, and the process for everything else you want to change will be the same. You also get an example code below, but like I said before, it doesn't show everything, so preferably have some code open on the side. You can download the code on my screen from the description below. It doesn't show every syntax, but if you are a beginner, it should be fine for following along. You can just drag the file onto your code screen to open it. The language you'll be using is C, which is the best compromise between being basic enough to have control over your code and optimizations, while also being high level enough to code complicated programs without it being a mess. It's about in between assembly and things like C++ or Java. That's also why it is the most used language for microcontrollers in general. Because we will be using C, you only need to change the syntax for C language in the drop-down menu. The reason why there are other languages here is that 
NetBean is just an open source IDE. Companies can modify it and use other languages if they want. But for us, it will just be C language. So just ignore the rest and pick C from the menu. You can either click the example code below to select the syntax you want to change, or just find it in the menu. The relevant code will have flickering underlines. Most will have inherited colors, which means it inherits the color from another place. For example, most backgrounds here will have inherited gray, the same color as the background, so they don't look weird. You can change them by clicking the color menu and choosing a preset color or pressing custom. In the custom, you can use any tab above to get an exact color as you like. Choose it and press apply. Note that some changes may need you to delete and write your code for it to be visible. That doesn't always happen, but be mindful if you don't see any change. As you can see, changing the background color for the syntax looks pretty dumb. Hence, most backgrounds are inherited gray, same as the screen. If you want to revert back the change, you can change the option again back to inherited. Or if you want to reset your changes and restart from stock, you can press the restore button here and apply again. Now here are some of the things I'll personally change. If you don't know what to edit, you can always come back to this video later when you understand how to write your code more. The values are for red, green, blue in order and between 0 to 255. Fields, 100, 255, 0. Function declaration, 255, 255, 255. Function usage, 255, 255, 255. Identifier, 200, 200, 200. Keyword, 0, 0, 120. Keyword directive, 0, 200, 0. Number, 200, 200, 200. Operator, 150, 150, 150. Processor identifier, 0, 200, 200. String, 255, 200, 0. There are two main types of files you're going to be dealing with. .c files and .h files. .c stands for C language, while .h stands for header files. We'll use header files to organize our codes, but they use the exact same language as the .c files, so don't be scared. But even though they use the C language, header files have their own syntax menu in the settings. But because they use the exact same language, I'll just apply the same settings on this menu as well. So I'll just skip forward. For other changes, one thing I definitely suggest changing is, well, Check this out. If I click a text, it gets highlighted in an obnoxious color each time. This happens to find the variables that are named the same, but the color in my opinion sucks. I'll use this as an example to show you how to find an option that you don't know the name of. You can see its color and you can scroll down until you see this particular color on the right side as well. But something like this is either gonna be a background or a highlight color. You may guess that it is a highlight one, but it is actually a background one. It's called Mark Occurrences. And you can say the background color of the syntax is the same as the highlights color. This is a giveaway that the syntax options color may be the one you're looking for. I personally don't like this highlight, and you can press Ctrl F to search for these words if you want, so I'll remove this by selecting it the same color as the main screen, which is inherited at the bottom of the list. And as you can see, you don't see it anymore. But if you want this feature on, you can choose another color to your liking. Don't forget that you can reduce the alpha value, which is opacity for the color, to make it blend more too. I'll show you a couple of interesting things that you can change as well. You can change the white space if you feel fancy, which pretty much changes the indentation colors. Or if you go to highlighting tab, you can change highlight caret row. Be careful that it's the background you need to change for an option like this, because it doesn't cover the text in front of it, but instead changes its background. As you can see, it changes the highlight of the selected row from your cursor. I know that some people like changing this option, I'll put it back since I like the original. You can experiment with these as you learn to write your code in the future. You can even change the selected text option, which as you can see is normally blue. But I like it as gray more, so I'll change it to 80, 80, 80.
And as you can see, it changes the selected text. I think it fits the theme more, but of course it is all subjective. Unfortunately, even though there is an export and import option down here, it didn't seem to work for me when I tried. So I can't give my settings for you to import directly if you want the same colors as mine. So if you want that, you'll have to do the same settings manually. That is also why I suggest you to note down your settings on a text file or something when you're satisfied. So you can restore them easily on another computer or your own computer if you want to reinstall. Before ending this video, there's another setting I'd like you to know. As with all decent IDEs, there's a shortcut tab in the MP lab as well. On the options menu, go to Keymap. Here you can assign a shortcut for pretty much everything you could ask for. You can search by the function name or the shortcut buttons. You can also combine buttons for shortcuts like Control Shift F5. You may not know anything from this menu, but as you start coding, you'll naturally find yourself asking, man, I wish I could do this thing by just pressing a button or something. And this is where you would do it. And this is the end of the video, and thank you for watching. If you liked the video, you can always leave a like and subscribe. It's always appreciated. And I'll see you in the next video.